So far we have discussed about the scale invariant function and some basic type of scale invariant function and some, uh, some example of uh, scale invariant function. Here we will discuss in more detail about uh, uh, how to detect the extrema uh, point or extrema detection in scale and space or we call it uh, key point localization. Uh, we, we say it we will be discussing in more detail about the scale invariant function and uh, mm, here uh, in extrema detection we will find points that are local extrema uh, this means we need to find or identify points that are best representation of a region of the image in different scales to look at these key points or interest points we iterate over each pixel and compare it with all its neighbor in other words, we want to find a robust maxima or minima in both space and scale. Uh, we have been talking about scale in space a lot, but the idea is as shown in figure. Here I have an image, here I have an image, and uh, I have an image, and we could filter that image again and again, and uh, some more again and we could think of it as a coarser and coarser scale and we have some point in that image and think of that as having neighbors on the left and right uh, in an image itself like I have this point and I have its neighbor in its left right and up and down similarly uh, uh, and this image mm, and this neighborhood uh, represents the space and we can also think of that point having neighbors in up and down in this scale like this this point has a uh, its neighbor in space the space means the neighborhood in the image itself and it has it may have the neighbor in the scale like it may have a scale up it, it may have its neighbor in up and down scale and this scale is represented by the blurrier versions of the image itself and mm, uh, then the this uh, this neighborhood in its image itself and uh, the neighborhoods in the up and down scale is represents uh, it's represented as a scale space now a specific way of uh, using this scale space was suggested by David Law in shift paper that scale invariant feature transform we will discuss in more detail about in our subsequent lectures but at that point there was a specific suggestion to do this uh, using the difference of Gaussian pyramid what that means is we do it at the different scales and over and uh, over the space and find the maximum value in all of those and while doing it some things uh, sometimes we find only the edges and what we have to do is we have to eliminate those edge points because we know that uh, the Lavalesian and Gaussians were intro was introduced they were introduced to find edge points as Harris said that edges are not good for finding specific locations so we want to want it to be more like a corner so basically what we want is we want to find points that have extrema values and they are thresholded that they are extreme enough and then make sure they are not the edges so here is the particular way to do it basically what we do is we take an image here we have got image here here we have got image and what we do is uh, we deal this image with an octave and here we have the first half octave and next octave uh, the octave uh, means like the octave mm, we make the image uh, like the octave represents the doubling the sides like the octave represents sides and this scale represents the uh, blurrier version or the smoothness of, of the image so in each octave we make 
the image blurrier and blurrier by Gaussian kernel then in next octave we reduce down the uh, we reduce down image to its the half of the size and make it blurrier and blurrier we can see here in first octave we have a image and we make it blurrier and blurrier in its scale and in we have we can see here the next uh, next octave and it also this octave also consists of different scales but this octave represents the uh, scaled down image and uh, uh, we, we we call it not the uh, scaled down we we call it the um, half of its size here uh, we we should be clear that here the scale represents uh, uh, where the scale represents uh, the the blurrier version and the octave represents the size of the image so uh, once we get this uh, scale and octave what do we do is we subtract these of uh, we subtract these uh, uh, images uh, and find the difference of Gaussian here we can see I have the image at the different scale uh, and this scale is changed by the different sigma value or and uh, once we get this different scaled version of image we take the difference and we get the difference of Gaussian similarly here in the next octave we also uh, blur the image and get the difference of Gaussian and here we can see the example uh, we can see here then with each of these Gaussian images we are going to uh, compare a pixel uh, and we compare this mark pixel here we can see this is the mark pixel and what we do is we compare this pixel to each of its uh, eight neighbors in the same um, space like this uh, this pixel is this pixel is compared once we get the difference of Gaussian we compare this with the pixel uh, around uh, its uh, neighbors in space and its uh, uh, nine nine neighboring pixel in scale like above it with the, we compare this pixel with this uh, eight neighbors and nine neighbors below the scale and nine neighbors above the scale and uh, if the pixel is maximum of those neighbors then it's taken as a extrema and here is an example here we have a picture of Einstein and we can see that picture uh, in the different octaves here this uh, uh, this picture in octave one we can see it one octave another octave and another octave and in we can see here the image in four different octaves and uh, and five different scales and what we do is uh, we uh, out of uh, so out of out in half and out in half and half mm, we can see the octave and uh, we can see uh, it go from sharper to blurrier and blurrier to blurrier and we can subtract two uh, these two images and get the difference we can see here like here I can subtract these two images and get the difference of Gaussian and again I have a blurrier version and again I, I get the difference of Gaussian and find the difference of Gaussian and like this and we get the difference of Gaussian at different scale and at the different octaves and then what we do is we can do uh, is we can take each pixel in uh, one of these uh, image and compare its neighbor in space and scale and when we do all of that we can find the extrema and it looks like that like once we get this difference of Gaussian then we compare the we takes one pixel and compare it compare that with its uh, neighbor in scale and space that we have uh, seen before and we get this like we get the extrema points here these are the extrema points and uh, here is the ex uh, Einstein image with the dots but uh, those extrema might be higher than their neighbors 
but some of these uh, might not be that higher um, than their uh, neighbors so what we want to make sure is that uh, the contrast of that value uh, is higher than particular amount so as we uh, said before we have used uh, an Laplacian and Gaussian we might have a nice contrast but uh, might not uh, be high in just in uh, that might be high in just in one direction uh, that is uh, along an edge so what we do is we uh, mixed uh, like we remove the edges uh, these are the our detectors uh, what is important so uh, there is uh, the robust with the which is robust with the respect to scale and space so because of uh, like what we do is uh, we compare we get here the extrema points and we compare uh, like uh, we only we, we threshold those edge points and finally we get we after we remove the edges then we get the only the extrema points uh, which represents our interest points and because we pull it out all of the extrema at all different scales and this is the David load shift detector and uh, what we uh, for a scale invariant detector we're gonna do the difference of Gaussian in space and scale and then pick the maxima that's why we can say it it's a scale invariant because we have uh, done this along the different scale and space and we can see here the scale invariant detector uh, the performance like we can compare the scale and the repeatability uh, we can see like this shift low and this shift detector has uh, some kind of better performance as compared to the which is uh, it's most it's more robust to scale as compared to the Harris corner detector and so far what we have learned is like uh, uh, how to deal with the images that have a large scale difference between them and if we have two images like here and that we are translated rotated and made it brighter or darker and stretch a little uh, bit the scale may not matter much but uh, if mm, we have a large scale difference then what we do is we try to find some scale and around them mm, and around the interest points by the by that scale invariant function then source for the extreme maxima and now uh, we know how to detect the uh, interest points next is to how to match them we can see here like we have th this is just a very simple example we have uh, discussed before as well like uh, uh, to match them what we have to do is I have got the points in my left and points on my right and uh, how we have to find the match so uh, in order to do that um, what we need is uh, uh, some term called the descriptor we need to describe each of these points like we can see here I have got these points and to match it with its corresponding uh, points in the another image that is translated or rotated or something like that we need a kind of descriptor and uh, that that will describe describe each of those points by looking at the different regions around it and uh, look for that in the next image so we'll, disc we'll discuss in more detail about the descriptor in our subsequent class